the structures of ionic solids. So we've talked about those um, different types of packing structures. Um, now we're going to apply that to actual ionic compounds. Many ionic compounds have crystalline structures that are very closely related to the structures we looked at. The difference, though, is instead of all the spheres being exactly the same, we have two different kinds of ions. We have cations and anions. And then we may have different numbers. It might not be a one-to-one -one ratio. And so that affects the crystal structure. So in the ionic solids, the coordination number represents the number of close cation-anion interactions. Those are the um, attractive forces, and more of that lowers <coughs> the potential energy. In general, what we see is the more similar the size of the cation and anion, the higher the coordination number. If the cation and anion are the same size as each other, they can pack together more effectively than if one is significantly larger. So these crystal structures balance coordination number. Uh, you have to have charge neutrality. And we may have different ion sizes. So first we'll look at ionic solids in which the ions are of similar size. An example of this is cesium chloride. Cesium cation and chloride anions are approximately the same size. So these are going to take on a simple cubic cell structure where the cesium ion lies in the center of the cell. The chloride ions are forming the simple cubic cell. We're looking at one kind of ion as determining the cell, and then the other ion is fitting in between. So the coordination number here is 8, and that's looking at the interactions between the cation and the anion. So this cesium ion is in direct contact with eight chloride ions. The unit cell contains one of each ion. We looked at this before, and we had just the green balls, and we didn't have the purple ball in there, right? And we said that it contained one atom, one-eighth each of eight different atoms. So this cell is going to have one chloride ion, but then it also has one cesium ion. Other, other ionic solids in which we have a one-to-one -one ratio and similar sizes are going to have the same structures. An example of that is calcium sulfide. Calcium has a 2 plus charge. Sulfide has a 2 minus charge. It's going to form a similar structure. When the ion sizes are different, um, it kind of messes things up a little bit. Um, so looking at sodium chloride, the sodium ions are much smaller than the chloride ions. And what happens here is the chloride ions take on a face-centered cubic structure. So here we have chloride ions at each corner and on the face, in the center of each face. The sodium ions are fitting in between the chloride ions. Our coordination number is, is limited to 6 here because if we look at, for example, this sodium ion, it is in contact with six chloride ions. If we didn't have to be concerned about charge neutrality, we could fit a lot more sodium ions in there. and We could have a higher coordination number. But we can't do that because the charges have to balance each other, each other out. So we've got chloride being face-centered cubic, and the sodium ions are sitting in the holes in between. This is also called a rock salt structure. Each unit cell contains four of each ion. So it's got four chloride ions and also four sodium ions. Any questions so far? So that feature is one um, unit cell? It's one unit cell, except we're showing the entire atoms at the corners. So before, when we looked at unit cells, it, we cut them apart, right? Let's, let's go back to one of those. like this. So there's a face-centered cubic unit cell. And so it's only one-eighth of each of the atoms on the sides, 
I mean the corners and half of each atom on the sides that are actually in the unit cell. The other half of this red atom is in the neighboring unit cell. So that's how there's four in each. Here we were just looking at one kind of atom or sphere or ball. And then when we get the ionic compounds, we have to put the counter ion, the other ion, in between. That make sense? Now I'll see if I can find where we were. The coordination number is six. So the coordination number in the ionic compound is not necessarily going to be the same as the coordination number in the uh, face-centered cubic unit cell, because it was 12 there, right? Yeah. The, the problem here is that we've got now two different kinds of atoms. We're not looking at the interaction between a chloride atom with other chloride atoms. That would still be 12. But those are not forces of attraction. We're looking at the contact between the sodium ions and the chloride ions. And so that's limited to 6. So does it mean uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4? Right. And, and 6 chloride ion, and 6 sodium ions are in contact with 1 chloride. So if the size difference gets even larger, the coordination number is going to become smaller. This is the zinc blend structure that zinc sulfide uh, takes on. Here we have the sulfide ions occupying a face-centered cubic structure, and the zinc ions are filling in the spaces in between. But because the zinc ions um, are so much smaller, um, there won't be, that they're fitting into a different place. Um, here, the chloride ions were between, and so this is a, a straight grid all the way through, alternating chloride, sodium, chloride, sodium. In this structure, these zinc ions are fitting into what are called the tetrahedral holes. So in this structure, looking at the yellow zinc ions, the zinc ions form tetrahedra. And there's a hole in between. And the zinc ion can fit into that hole. It's small enough to fit into the hole. So the zinc ions occupy four of the eight tetrahedral holes that are present in this, in this structure. Again, each unit cell has four of each ion. But now the coordination number is only four. Each, each zinc ion is in contact with four sulfides instead of six. It has to do with relative sizes. And things get even more complicated when we have unequal numbers of ions. The ones we've looked at so far, there have been one cation and one anion. In calcium fluoride, there's two fluoride ions for every one cation. And then that things, makes things a little more complicated. So this is what's known as the fluorite structure. We have the calcium ions in a face-centered cubic, and the fluoride ions um, are occupying the all eight of the tetrahedral holes. In the zinc sulfide, they only occupied four because we had to have a one-to-one -one ratio. But here, we have a one-to-two ratio. So we've got um, this unit cell contains four cations and eight anions. There's, there's a very similar structure called an antifluorite, so it's kind of like opposite. And that's used by compounds where you have a two to one ratio instead of a one to two, <coughs> where you have twice as many cations as anions. That's called an antifluorite structure. So there aren't a lot of um, for practice problems in this chapter, so I'm going over some of the conceptual connection problems. We should be able to answer a question like this. Which compound is most likely to crystallize in the zinc blend structure? So before we even look at the choices, let's go back and look at the zinc blend. And this was 
um, larger size difference. So the zinc blend structure happens when you have a big difference in size between the cation and the anion. The sodium chloride or rock salt structure is when um, the size difference is not very large. And this simple cubic is when the ions have similar sizes. So that's the information we need to answer this question. So we've got three different ionic compounds here, which is most likely to crystallize in the zinc blend structure. So what are we looking for? Large difference, small difference? We're looking for a large difference in size. We've got 148 and 181, 65 and 181, that's, that's bigger. And then we've got 96 and 216. You're like, um, Maybe we should do some subtracting and find out which one's different. So 181 minus 65, the difference on that one, the difference in size, is 116 picometers. And the difference between 216 and 96 is 120. And just for grins, let's do the first one. 181 minus 148, that difference is 33. So this is definitely the smallest difference in size. That's, that's not going to be our zinc blend structure. We're looking at these two, 116 and 120. That's actually very similar between B and C. What else is different? about magnesium chloride and copper iodide. The ratio is different. Here we have a 1 to 2 ratio, and here we have a 1 to 1 ratio. What was the ratio in the zinc blend? 1 to 1. If you have a 1 to 2 or a 2 to 1, you have a fluorite or an antifluorite. So this one cannot be zinc blend. It's got to be the CUI. So this was large difference in ion size. And a one-to-one -one ratio of cations to anions. Any questions? I won't make you draw any of these on a test. Yep. It was simple cubic <coughs> with the, um, it, it looks like a body centered, yeah. but when you, when you give the structure a name, you only look at one of the ions. Okay. And so just looking at the chloride ions, it's simple cubic. Yeah. Any other questions?